What's up everyone? It's Tom here from toolswithtom.com. Really excited to be talking to you all today because I want to take you through one of the best ways that you can do keyword research and it's with a relatively new tool that SEMrush brought out last year called the SEO Keyword Magic Tool. Now what this tool allows you to do is put in a input a keyword into the search and then be provided with an extensive list of words that relate to that keyword categorized for you up into different niches and then also for each word giving you really deep keyword analysis on what is going on. So this is just so powerful for being able to essentially find out where there are going to be opportunities in a certain area for you and see where you can actually go to create either content or new pages on your website. It pulls everything into one really nifty report you can pull in up to 1 million keywords at a time, depending on how competitive and how popular the keyword is that you're searching for. And so it essentially allows you to do what a lot of other keyword research tools do through multiple processes all in one spot. So I'll show you how it gets, it works. To, just to get started though, I wanna show you where it is. So if you are in your SEMrush account, you can see you have a menu here on the left. If you go and click on keyword analytics, you can see down at the very bottom, there's the new tool. It's still in beta at this stage, but it's the SEO keyword magic. Click on that one and you'll get to the same page that I'm on now. Just let that load for a moment. Okay, and this is where you'll start out. So the first thing that you can look to do from here is choose the database in which you want to be targeting. So you really wanna make sure that you have something that's relevant for you. Um, the US, Canada, Brazil, it's got a bunch of the American countries, European countries, it's got India and Australia as well. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they're going to start to add more of these as the tool rolls out of beta as well. But let's get started by just using the United States as our example. And I, what I'm going to begin with doing in here is we need to put in a keyword in here that's going to be relevant to us and something where we're going to work out where additional opportunities lie as well. So let's take a, a very open keyword and why don't we say something like breakfast. So put breakfast into here and you can see that the number of keywords is pretty substantial. We've got 109,194 keywords and overall there's a total monthly search volume. So how many searches are taking place for all these words each month is 12 million with an average difficulty of 35%. So with an average difficulty of 35%, chances are there's going to be some opportunities in here to be able to find really great keywords for, for both niches and for content, depending on which avenue we're taking. So to begin with, you can see that on the left here, it's actually gone through and it categorizes all of the different words. So if I then click on ideas, you'll be able to see that it's provided me with all of the different keywords that relate to breakfast ideas. So, why this is so effective is if you were starting out, you could say, all right, maybe I want to start a new website called breakfastideas.com. If that were to be the case, automatically you would already have a great suite of words that then you could go out and create content for and new pages for on the website, which makes life a hell of a lot easier versus having to find all of these ones individually through different keyword research through the keyword planner and other spaces as well. Uh, so what you can do in each of these reports is to begin with, you'll be given with your monthly search volume for each of the keywords. You, then you have your keyword difficulty. So the keyword difficulty, just if we're wanting to know what that exactly is, essentially it's a combination of both on-page SEO, so relating to the content, the architecture, and all of the on-page content on your actual website, and the off-page content. So essentially... The off-page factors relating to how many backlinks all of the search engine results have for this particular word. And so 
what SEMrush does is it has a look at the current top 10 spots and says, okay, how difficult is it going to be to rank for this word based on how good these guys are doing both on page and off page in relation to the keyword that I'm looking at. So you can see for breakfast ideas, the keyword difficulty is 90%. It is relatively high. So this is probably one that you don't really want to look at targeting. Over here in CPC, you can see how much advertisers are willing to pay in, the re in relation to cost per click. And this is usually a really great indicator of the quality of the keyword, how valuable that keyword is going to be to advertisers generally relates to how much money you can also make if you're setting up AdSense on your site, getting people through to your site. And then this is roughly how high the quality of traffic is for these particular keywords. So then we also have competition. So the competitive density. And so what the competitive density relates to is how many other advertisers are competing on this word. And also we can see in here the SERP features, which is really useful for being able to work out, okay, are there any big rich snippets, you know, position zero, knowledge graphs, are there videos being shown? Are there Wikipedia links? Are there images, which there are in this particular example? And then the last thing you can do is just even click on the SERP, the search engine result page and have a look at what's going on. So essentially what SEMrush does is it takes a snapshot of the page. And so once this loads, you'll be able to see all of the different content that is on the page one of breakfast ideas. There we go. So you can see here, this is all the content they found. You can see that they've got this one here, the SERP feature of the images. And there'd also be some videos. Yep. It also be some videos later down. Here's one here as part of those search engine result pages. Okay. So this all sounds well and good, but if you're really purely just looking for opportunities based on a broader C keyword, I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first step that you would want to be doing is if you start with all keywords. So if you start relatively broad, let's start to put in a couple of filters to work out where the best opportunities are going to lie for me. So the first thing that I'm wanting to do is generally I'm wanting to look at a larger word count. The reason being it tends to be easier to rank for keywords that have two or more words as part of the overall phrase. And so I'm not sure if this is really just purely in relation to that one word can match a ton of different content on the web. Uh, generally, one word is going to be a lot more competitive as well because there are a lot more essentially websites that relate to that one word. So wherever we can extend out that word count, we should look to. So I'm going to put in here as a minimum of two words. So you can see that that's now removed a bunch of my results and we've only got results in there that have two words included in them. The other thing I want to do is say I'm looking to start a new niche website purely from scratch where I want at least a thousand keyword searches a month on my base keyword. So what I would do in here is put in 1000 as my volume. Now that I've got that in there, I've removed a, a great deal of keywords. We're down to 963. And now I've got all the ones that have 1000 or more searches. If I want to continue to filter down, another area you might want to filter down is on keyword difficulty. So when it comes to keyword difficulty, when keywords essentially have 80 or more percent keyword difficulty, they're generally going to be relatively hard to rank for. You're going to need to do a lot more in the way of off-page SEO uh, to compete with the, with the bigger players out there and the more established players. So let's just start by putting in 75 as our keyword difficulty. And after I put that in here, the other thing that I'm going to want to put in, you can see that there's a, a few blank results in here as well. You tend to get these occasionally with the SEM rush reports and the blank ones, they don't necessarily mean that the keyword is uh, either high competitive or, or low competitive. It just 
Unfortunately, it doesn't really give you an indication of either. So what I like to do is just to remove these ones entirely to begin with. So I'm just going to put in here keyword difficulty 1 to 75, which will weed out those opportunities. And now we're only left with, as you can see here, a list of only 152 words. So now we've got a really refined list of keywords that we might then want to go after. The next thing I can do is I can sort them based on a range of different factors. At the moment, it's currently sorting on the volume of the keyword. But what I can also do is sort on the keyword difficulty. So if I click on this table here, that seems to have updated itself. Let me put that one back. There we go. Okay, so now we're sorting currently by the lowest keyword difficulty with a thousand monthly searches and two or more words. So what we're starting to find in here is that there's a lot of location-based searches. So I can see things like bread and breakfast, Utah, bed and breakfast, Austin. Let's continue down and see what else is involved in here and see if there's any good opportunities that pop out for us. Lots of bed and breakfasts, lots of location specific searches. Okay, so over here, I can see that there's this one here. There's, there's two here that look relatively interesting, one being Whole30 Breakfast and one being Breakfast Catering. Now, Breakfast Catering, you can see, has a keyword difficulty of 63. So relatively low, and it's got a very high cost per click of $6.40. Now, there's probably a few more factors that you want to look into around this one, but automatically this looks like a, a relatively good opportunity. So if I click on that particular keyword, what SEMrush will then provide is a bit of a keyword overview. So we'll go back into one of the reports you're probably a little bit more familiar with in showing how many searches the word gets a month, the number of searches, related keywords, and then also what are the current top positions for this particular keyword. So we can essentially run through this as many times as we see fit in our way to finding what we're looking for. So I can find, for example, say I wanted to start a, a website that's more about uh, cool new breakfast ideas for, and recipes. You can see that there's one here for paleo breakfast casserole with a keyword difficulty of 68%, which could, again, be a really interesting opportunity to trial out. Again, it's got a very high cost per click. It's just a matter of going through and selecting the ones that you want to do. So once you've gone through and found the keywords that you would like, Let's just say I'm, I'm happy with this entire list. The other thing that you can do that's really useful is the ability to export that to Excel. So I can click on export to XLS and in a moment that will then, yep, you can see that I've got my Excel file here. Open that one up. And I've got all of my keywords now all in here so I can have a look at them through the spreadsheet and I can potentially look to import them into another type of keyword analysis tool that I might want to use as well, depending on which route we want to go down. But this has already given me a really great overview of everything I'm going to need in terms of volume, keyword difficulty and cost per click. So guys, that's essentially it for today. I really recommend having a bit of a play with the tool Try and find something that you're passionate about and then see how far it can take you. You know, no matter what you put in, if I put in, you know, for example, coffee and put in a keyword difficulty, have a bit of a play, work out where the best opportunities are going to lie. Start to write a few of these down and then work out, hey, can I actually build a website about this? Is this going to give me enough content and something in mind where not only can I create a website that people love and that, they get, that gets hits, but can I also make some money from it? And is it going to be a good source of high quality traffic? 
So that's it for today, guys. If you have any questions, just let me know. Email me, tom at toolswithtom.com. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you soon.